sequence risk basically recognizes that the volatility of returns does have an impact on the outcome in a retirement-oriented portfolio. If we were going to play the game, are you smarter than a fifth grader, uh, you might draw the conclusion that it doesn't. Um, in the fifth grade, we all learned something called the commutative property, which basically said, uh, when you line things up in a row and multiply them times one another, regardless of the order of the uh, of the elements of the equation, the factors in the equation, um, the answer doesn't change. Well, that works with addition and multiplication. It doesn't work with subtraction, division, or retirement planning. So you see on the right side of this slide two potential streams of returns. In column one, a 20% loss in the first year. In the second column, a 20% gain. All we did was invert these numbers. It's the exact same stream of, of returns. And in fact, if you put a million dollar in a portfolio and got either of these columns of returns, when you got to the end, you would have about $1.4 million. However, when you look at the our retiree, most people are familiar with the 4% rule. So in this case, we started with a million dollars and we took out $40,000 a year. And depending on which sequence of returns you get, uh, we have almost a quarter of a million dollars difference. It looks like about $230,000 difference in balances in the, in the two sets of numbers. And so when we get to year 10, because every, every, every day is sort of like the beginning day of a new retirement, in one case, you're starting with almost a million dollars. And in the case, second case, you're starting with only $760,000. This is the consequence of sequence risk. And obviously, the 760 would support a much smaller retirement income from that point forward than the roughly million dollars you would have if you were lucky enough to get the good stream of returns. So now introduce the concept of the bond ladder. So how does the ladder work?